Hello, this is a demonstration of AL GUI, which as its name implies is a graphical user interface library for Allegro. It's written completely in C, albeit I've made liberal use of object-oriented hacks to make the library much easier to use from an end user's perspective. It allows you to subclass components, build your own, listen for events, etc. One thing to note the frames per second, as you can see down here in the corner, runs much slower when the screen capturing software is running. Normally it would be at 450 on my laptop with its integrated Intel GMA950 chip, which is definitely not known for its excellence. What you're looking at here is the desktop of a sample application. As you can tell by the black border, the desktop itself is not expanded to the full screen. The desktop can be positioned anywhere on the screen, can be larger than the screen if you want. Um, you can put components directly onto the desktop, as you can see by this quit button here, which I will not click. Also, there is a window or a frame here at the center that can be moved around. It has a non-functional menu bar and two functional buttons. Also, the screen capture cannot show the actual cursor that's being displayed. Really, the system cursor is used and it changes based on the current context, such as when you resize it, it shows a resizing cursor. I will press this top button. And, amazingly enough, a new window appears. It also has the only other widget that's been created, and that's a checkbox, which here is aptly named checkbox. Now as I resize this component, the button will stay centered, but there is no layout manager or constraint system built yet. This was just recentered by listening to the resize event and repositioning the button using absolute coordinates. The coordinates are actually relative to the parent, so it's, it's pretty easy to keep things where you want. This main window is actually translucent, so you can kind of see through it. Not that that's very useful here. As I create more button or more windows, the frame rate really doesn't drop too much due to the uh, the painting system. Whoops, I didn't want to show that yet. Pretend you didn't see it. A few more buttons here. The basic painting algorithm right now is just a simple dirty flag. A component either needs to be redrawn or it doesn't. As I, for instance, move over this button, that button will be marked as dirty, which will flag its parent as dirty all the way up through the desktop. That will cause the desktop to be re redrawn, but each individual window is double buffered, so the windows that I have not interacted with don't need to be re-updated, only the actual components that have been changed. So it's not, you know, as, as elegant as a dirty rectangle system, but it provides a good enough frame rate for now. I'm going to close out these windows. Not much more to say about them. Now this other button, which was pressed earlier and gave you a sneak preview, is a worms game. I don't really know why it's even called worms or a game because all it is is a red circle that randomly moves around. But what this illustrates is a window whose paint method has been overloaded, so to speak, and the user has supplied a custom painting method to paint the background of this window, which, as you can see, paints behind whatever components have already been added to it. This window itself is being updated at 30 frames per second. I can create some more. 
and again these really won't decrease the frame rate a whole lot uh, once this the window gets initialized simply because I've synced the redrawing of all the windows together normally I mean, it's not a requirement but for this demonstration each window is flagged dirty 30 times a second even though the logics are running separately from that as I move a window you can see it still continues to be refreshed the little circle continues to move because the GUI is not blocking here you could set it up to do that if you really wanted to create a user interface that was a miserable experience for the people using your programs one other thing to note is that any any object that's currently associated with the user interface uh, as in being displayed is owned by the library so when you close a window by removing it from its parent that completely destroys everything associated with it you can choose to remove a component and not destroy it if you wish to you know use it for later but if you actually free a component from memory everything associated with it its children and so forth go with it which I think is probably a good way to do it at least for now it seems to work well like everything else subject to change so if I were to quit right now and tell it to destroy the desktop everything is freed I don't have to worry about manually freeing anything which could be a nightmare in a in a big GUI system um, that's it for now if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them and I will probably feel free to ignore them but you never know and I guess we'll just see where this goes.